this week. And every week we bring you the latest news and all things in geek. Uh, we've got a bunch of announcements today and a very special guest, Jen Lyons. Everybody, a round of applause at your computer screens, who just released book four in a series uh, that, if I start talking about it, I'll get into it. Announcements first. So, as you all know, World Builders does a fundraiser once or twice a year, and our summer fundraiser is coming up. Save the date for our annual Geeks Doing Good Showcase fundraiser, which starts on June 21st. Uh, we've got over 50 new and limited run products. We, it is just an absolute blast to dream up all of these amazing new things. There's so many cool things coming out. From your favorites like Delicious Jamdrian, we couldn't not do the Jamdrian, and Heifer International Coffee. Cheers, talking coffee before. Uh, to World Builders Dice, limited edition tabletop games, King Killer themed glassware, and prints, art galore, so many beautiful prints. Uh, so save the date, June 21st is when the Geeks Doing Good Showcase starts. We also will have special guests. This is kind of, this is kind of exciting. It's like, hey guys, guess who's coming to my birthday party? Uh, Brandon Sanderson is going to be among our guests. We verified that. Oh, we've got a kitty. Hold on. Interruption. Intr <laughs> interruption. Introduction. This, this is Ozymandias. Ozymandias. Say hi, Ozymandias. <laughs> Ozymandias is like, I'm not for the screen. I'm for the pets. <laughs> he, he doesn't actually like to be picked up. So you can yeah. tell he's just like, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm down. <laughs> the, the limp noodle. Yep. Oh, goodness. How long did we not have sound? Oh, no. <laughs> Do I have to redo the, all of the announcements? Um, anyways. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure we weren't going to miss my geeking out about our Geeks Doing Good Showcase items. Um, so definitely come hang out. We will be kicking off with Pat doing a traditional 12 hour marathon. We're doing Disco Elysium, uh, which is going to be extremely fun. And we will be, um, it, it's our event that enables us to do all of our other events. So definitely come out, uh, digitally, right? Everything's digital and, um, yeah. Get excited about it. I'm just distracted by kitty. There's just like a little ear. <laughs> just like a little ear. Okay. Just more announcements. Oh. I'm try to get oh. a little more kitty. Oh. Just, little just more a kitty. noggin. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I no. don't, I'm total lap cat. I just want to <laughs> velcro yeah. to the lap, please. Yep. Uh, all right. So. We, uh, I don't know if any of you in chat noticed, but the CIFWA, Science Fiction Writers Association, right? Uh, we did, we helped them out with an auction last week. It was powered by World Builders. Uh, we helped them raise funds to support their author initiatives, which include scholarships, uh -huh. the hashtag Disney must pay initiative to get writers the royalties they deserve and more. We helped them out with their auction. Science fiction and fantasy authors. Thank you. I always forget the extrapolated version of a... Uh, sure. My words aren't working very well today, but we'll get there, guys. Anyway, the auction raised over $25,000. Woo! That's like freaking amazing amounts of impact for a really, really worthy organization that helps authors do what they do and that helps everyone because we all love books that's why we're here so in case you ever miss a world builders weekly or you want to enjoy kind of our greatest hits our highlight reel we have turned it into a podcast uh you can go to worldbuilders.org podcast all the episodes will be there or you can search wherever you listen to podcasts um we recently got on apple podcasts so if you do those little star reviews, if you're a reviewing kind of person, uh, we would love to have your review. So that's 
like within the last day or two, Gray was able to get us on Apple, Apple Podcasts. So everybody, round of applause for Gray. Good work. Okay, we're on to trivia. The old trivia question. What? <laughs> this is funny because I am known for not seeing very many movies and I have seen neither of these movies. What actor known for Jurassic Park played Odin briefly in Thor Ragnarok? Anybody know? This is the one you can say in chat, the next one you can't. Jen, do you know? Anthony Hopkins? No, well, not a I have no idea, but the answer says Sam Neill. He didn't play Odin. That was Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> Sam Neill was not in Thor. <laughs> oh, you said specifically in Thor Ragnarok. Okay. I see, I see, I see. Yep. All right. All right. Got me a on technicality. Trivia question. Yep. Yep. We, yep. Yep. We needed the geek in the van for that one because yep. I just, I. No, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten that one at all. Cause yep. All right. He, 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 fate, he was the one who acted as Odin. He wasn't. Right, the right, Odin. right, right. All right. So this trivia question, this is this week's. And remember if you send it in on any of our social medias, uh, and get it right, you will be entered to win our monthly, be our monthly trivia champion uh, and get some swag. So do not say it in chat if you know the answer, DM it to us directly. Stranger Things is set in the fictional rural town of Hawkins, but in which US state is it located? <laughs> so, that's our new trivia question. Race to your, your inboxes and uh, participate in that for a little bit of world builders fun. So finally to our guest, Jen Lyons. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, welcome. I uh, will do your quick little bio rundown. Jen Lyons lives in Atlanta, Georgia with her husband, her three cats who we've been graced with one of so far and a nearly infinite number of opinions on anything from Sumerian mythology to the correct way to make a martini. Formerly a video game producer, she now writes full time. A longtime devotee of storytelling, Lion traces, Lions traces her geek roots back to playing first edition Dungeons and Dragons in grade school and reading her way from A to Z in the school's library. The third, the fourth book in the five part course of dragons, uh, or no, the third book has been twice nominated for an astounding award. That's what that is. <laughs> um, which is so exciting. Congratulations. That was just announced a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was announced, I think last month or I, I don't know, time, time is a flat time. circle. Um, but yeah, no, uh, that's, I mean, it's, I guess it's technically me that gets nominated and not the yeah, book. Yeah. So it's, it's basically for 2019 and 2020 as like a, um, new a rising star yeah. author yes yeah. very 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 cool um so you can pick up any of those books at your local independent bookstore um beth has got beth has got all the links in the chat uh for twitter instagram all of that good stuff so let us start i've got to be honest it was the double whammy of amazing catchphrases that I was like, I have to talk to Jen just like as soon as possible. Because on Twitter, it's, do you want dragons? Because this is how you get dragons. And then, I, <laughs> and then I go to the website and it's because I always took your weird as a compliment. And I was like, oh man, we would have been besties. We would have been besties <laughs> in elementary school. <laughs> So I just, first of all, great catchphrases. <laughs> Thank you. Your list of hobbies overlaps almost perfectly with at least one of the world builders somewhere. Uh, Gray is a total geek for fountain pens. Mike and I get off track in meetings all the time about video games. We play tabletop RPGs. So before I continue, I know Gray will want to know, what's your favorite pen? 
Ooh, um, that's a, that is a difficult question because or top three. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, I really like, uh, I really like pilot fountain pens. Ooh, okay. Um, I really like, I actually, um, am right now and I, it's a combination of they're actually cheap plus good, but, um, the, the, the Chinese moon man pens, I really, Ooh. really am liking, um, because they're, I mean, they're, they're just, they, they hit all of my, Ooh. they hit all of my needs. They have an amazingly Ooh. large inkwell. Um, they have a little bit of flex to them. They're, they're just, they're really, really good. Um, and then, uh, I, I really like, um, like the really old pens. So I, I'm, uh, I'm a, I'm a sucker for like the old Schaefer, um, flex, Okay. pens with high flex um, I'm, do I'm doing the nod and smile and I know Gray is over by his keyboard going oh, oh. <laughs> that's my Gray impression <laughs> but um you know I yeah no I I I, I like I like most fountain pens <laughs> Just fountain but, pen enthusiast do yeah. you when you are writing do you usually write I mean, it seems like digital would be the only way to go, but is there any part of your process where you, you physically draft things out? Oh, well, I mean, I don't physically draft out like text, mm -hmm. but I definitely do like, I have, I have books that are filled with plot notes and things like that. And, and, and those tend to be, I have stuff um and and that's what i use i use fountain pens for um because uh oh, lamis i like lamis too anyway um <laughs> <laughs> i see you in chat <laughs> um, but, uh, fountain pens are just good um it, it engages it engages a different part of the brain when you when you hand write stuff out so mm -hmm. For me, um, I find that I tend to make a lot of, if I'm stuck or if I, I just need to really work through the ramifications of a thing, plotting wise, it really helps to handwrite it out. Yeah. I'm a, I am a journaler. I handwrite in my journal and I handwrite letters as much as I can because you're right. It's the, the ritual of it gives it a completely different memory layer. Like scientifically it, it yeah, goes yeah, yeah. differently, but yeah. it's also just kind of it's fun to to really romanticize a process too and like pick that pen that you want to use and those inks and, yeah that yeah. ink can get it's got to have the right vibe okay so Gray's question out of the way <laughs> um I think perhaps very obviously the thread within all of the hobbies that we all share is world building and you've been doing world building in many ways over your career so what brought you to this particular stop on it, authorship? Um, well, ultimately, uh, I would say it was a dare from my first husband. <laughs> he, he dared me to write a book. <laughs> Perfectly legitimate reason. And, uh, and I did. And I was like, hey, this is fun. I, I enjoyed this. And... Um, I should do it again. Uh, and, and so I kind of, I did. Um, and uh, I kind of kept doing it. And just kept doing it. And then, kept then doing it. Yeah. For awards and everybody's. Uh, well, and I mean, it took a little while, right. You know, and, yeah. and I'm very, very, I'm very, very grateful that no one offered to publish that first book. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, that, no, that would have been terrible. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, but the process was addictive. The the process was addictive. It was it's you know it's fun to both. It's fun to be God. <laughs> you think it's good to be king? It's it's even better to be God. <laughs> Um, Which makes sense also as a video game producer, right? That's how I always think of making and playing games is, you know, controlling all these little people. Well, I mean, video game production is more like um, being mom. Oh, you know, you're, you're running behind everybody going, did, did you remember to do the thing? Yeah. Did, did you pack a lunch? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> did you? Yeah. 
<laughs> and then you can and they then... stop bothering you are they because if they're bothering you i will talk to them <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's totally true. It's totally true. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, a that's... little more freedom with writing though than uh yeah, yeah. production is hurting cats. That's yes. cat that. that's yes, definitely very true. Which uh, I mean, I enjoy doing. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. Clearly yeah. I enjoy hurting cats. Got three of them. Um yeah, but uh but no, I mean, you know, when you when you're writing a book, I mean, this is the scary thing about it too when you're writing a book, you, you get to control all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that is both what is wonderful and what is terrifying about writing books. Um, (laughs) but, uh, you know, mostly, mostly it's a lot of fun. I can definitely see it being, I mean, something that we talk a lot about perspective authors and kind of like getting over the like empty page anxiety and some of the, um, you know, Gray, Gray's talked to people about like, I've done NaNoWriMo, but what, you know, I don't have a novel, like, how do I get from actually from point A to point B? So it seems like a, a fantasy author, authorship, again, great with words today. Um, but it seems like that fun world building. And then also there's kind of a puzzle side to it of, of actually getting the writing process completed. Right. What is your like number one tip for completing your books? Because you you've been completing them at a really impressive pace. <laughs> um, I mean, I I think that there's there's a couple of things. Um, and and I haven't mastered this yet. Um, I, I suspect this is one of those things that just as you go through your career, you may not ever master. But um, but figuring out for me when I am blocked, <laughs> you know, because it's not like my brain always says, Hey, you're blocked on this. I just find myself playing video games a lot. Um, <laughs> so, you know, um, being able to recognize those warning signs of, Hey, you're blocked on this and how to break through that and continue on has been a really important part of the process. Um, which for me, it's almost inevitably that I'm doing something wrong. Mm. Um, almost inevitably when I am blocked, it's just that I'm actually trying to force something in the book that isn't actually the right approach. And my subconscious is going, no, stop it. Oh, um, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so once I can get through that, um, you know, it, it's, it's better. Um, the other, but I mean, obviously that's going to be different for every person. Sure. Oh, of course. You know, you can't really. There's no universal advice. (laughs) There's no universal advice. Um, But I would definitely say that, uh, and this, this, honestly, this sounds like the most trite advice ever, but you have to write. Oh yeah. No, that's what everybody. You have to get your butt in the chair and actually write. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And, you know, um, that, that is, made the difference you know uh for me and again everyone's different um for me if i if i slow down i give my mind a chance to start (laughs) i give the gremlins a chance to come out (laughs) yeah and and they will start you know um i'll start second guessing myself i'll start you know uh, wondering pretty soon I'm rewriting the whole thing right you know it just you know I I can't Endless I can't do it slow yeah. is what it turns out to, it turns out to be that first draft I have to get down on the page yep um and then once I do that I can go back and take my time with the rest of it but um yeah I had to I had to figure that out I had to figure out that uh the worst because there's a lot of advice out there that says you should be slow and careful and you should, you know, right. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it was, it was a process for me to figure out that that was actually not the right thing for me to do that I had to do the opposite. Yeah. I think it's important. And kind of what I'm gathering from both of those things is like, write the way you need to write. It's okay. Like everybody's going to get stuck and have roadblocks it doesn't mean you're you know not a good enough writer yet or something right it's right I I have friends who get very tripped up on oh I've you know 
I, I, they, do, they, they haven't identified their pace yet or what their momentum is and, and just having kind of a compassionate approach and being like, ooh, that's when my gremlins come out. Let's not work in that direction. Let's work this other way. Um, I think it is, it seems kind of simple overall to say like work the way you need to work, but sometimes people need permission for that. I know I have. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, and I've seen this a lot. I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in my friends that are writers. Um, we really are our own worst enemies. We, we mm-hmm. absolutely are <laughs> like there, there's nobody that's going to be as hard on us as ultimately we are on ourselves. And I, um, I, I, I see it all the time where people really do an excellent job of convincing themselves they can't succeed. Yeah. Um, what would you say, what is your, your tip for that specific, um, like, do you, do you depend on a writing community a lot while you're writing? Do you have specific people who you bounce ideas off of? How is your sort of social aspect of, of creating? Yes to all of that. <laughs> um, I would also say that, uh, I mean, I, I am, I was, I was very smart, very, very smart. I married another writer. (laughs) So, so he is, he is very supportive and uh, he's also a fantastic person to uh, bounce ideas off of and, you know, get feedback from. And I, um, this is not as insulting. I probably have to back, back, take a step back and explain the logic behind this, but it's going to sound bad and it's not. <laughs> asterisk. Um, yeah, asterisk. He's my five-year-old. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and that goes way back to, there, there used to be, well, there still is a thing uh, running around the internet called Rules for the Overlord. Mm-hmm. And part of, one of the Rules for the Overlord was uh, any of my master plans will be explained to a five-year-old child and any flaws the five-year-old can spot will be corrected before implementation. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's Which is so- honestly just a brilliant strategy for almost any career or like, <laughs> it's just good life advice. Right. Pretend so- like you got to explain it to a five-year-old first. Because a five-year-old's going to go, but why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but why? And not um, about the stuff you think they will. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, that that's our particular shorthand for for anybody doesn't have somebody who's willing to like give them harsh truths because mm-hmm. they've lost their five-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Very important. Yeah. It's important. Um, so speaking of, of throwbacks, I, I feel like we'll probably have to end up breaking this down by categories, but what were the formative geek IPs of your childhood? What were your childhood games, books, tabletop games, movies? Oh gosh, I mean, um, I mean, obviously, we're just gonna sit. We're just gonna take Dungeons and Dragons, and we're gonna put it over here on a little shelf and yeah. <laughs> shine a little light on it. Dragons, um, <laughs> dragons. Um, but I mean, I think let's see. Um, I. I a lot of books, just a lot of books. Um, Whether that is, uh, I think I was really into, well, not think, I was really into Mary Stewart for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, I mean, Ursula K. Le Guin was, I I found Ursula K. Le Guin and I found it, the first book I found was actually Tombs of Atuan, not Wizard of Ursi. Oh, okay. Um, uh, But, you know, that, kind of hit at the same time as as my you know my D discoveries so i mean just to picture like a, a nine-year-old girl just drawing maze after maze after maze yes. <laughs> because this because is exactly of, why i asked this question <laughs> yeah picture that i wanted you to paint for me <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely you know so um and then you know also like although i think this came a little bit later like i all of the cartoons that that kind of came about in the the early 80s mm-hmm. um and uh um you know macross like racing home after school to watch to to go watch macross um mm-hmm. and scream about min may um <laughs> <laughs> rick lisa is right there right there <laughs> 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 I 
I was walking through Target yesterday and um, cause I, I loved, I wanted all things geek, but my, my parents had no idea. They're total normie humans. And so my mom's strategy for buying me books from about that age on was, is there a dragon on the cover? <laughs> And if there was, or if there was the word dragon, she would just buy it for me. <laughs> so I read series out of order. <laughs> but that's I, I, no, I mean, I totally relate to that. And it's, it's really funny. And you said the Rune of Kings, right? The first mm-hmm. book has a dragon on the cover, um, which, which my, when my editor wrote me and said, I was thinking we put a dragon on the color cover. I was like, I wrote her back. I said, Do you, are you? Are you expecting me to say no to that? <laughs> are you, are this you is ex- not the most extreme pitch you'll ever make, my friend. <laughs> uh, sold, <laughs> absolutely sold. Uh, but I've I've literally watched people like just about face on the other side of a convention center because oh, book with a dragon on the cover. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah. First. That's what I did in Target yesterday when my late eighties geek self saw sailor moon on on a men's t-shirt in like the pop culture aisle and had these flashbacks to my childhood of like going to the local the seediest local mall and to the anime shop where there was it was just like packed floor to ceiling with keychains and bootlegs and now they can just get sailor moon stuff at target these days right right like yeah you know (laughs) this so it's like it's like how my my teenage goth self reacted to the first time i had ever discovered a hot topic as an adult (laughs) who is not really going to buy anything at a hot topic i was just like are you kidding me (laughs) are you kidding me shamelessly buy from hot topic because they have me absolutely i get my lilo and stitch fix there i get my sailor moon fix that they just know fandom well, they've they've i think they've correctly expanded out into they, they understand yes. their mark their their market demographics but i yeah. just i remember like all the stuff you know like damn it in my day if we wanted to dress in black we had to go to goodwill buy something and died in the bathtub yep. with writ yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then hot topic came along and you could get any band t-shirt without even going to a show what the <laughs> hell is that <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hot Topic will be the single standing store after mankind has fallen. I got a corgi themed Hawaiian t shirt from Hot Topic, and now I think they released another one this year. I can't own two corgi themed Hawaiian t shirts. Well, you can. I will, yeah. And I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but come on, Hot Topic, please. Okay, so let's talk dragons because they've obviously been represented in a bajillion different ways throughout history, throughout pop culture, all, what are Jen Lyons dragons like? Oh, they're kaiju. Kaiju. <laughs> I mean, so, so, and I mean, that's me going back to Tolkien, right? That mm-hmm. that's me going back to, I want a dragon that's so big. It can, you know, collapse a mountain range when it, when it falls. I want, I want dragons that you wouldn't even think about like trying to fight close up. Cause that's, no that's just not even why would you stand in front of a train (laughs) yeah I mean you know so so yeah I I the with the first book um there was a there was a the dragon in that one I was like so dragon but what if also volcano um (laughs) so so you know the old man is is basically okay iconic personification of a volcano um including wow. breathing a pyroclastic flow because that's fun yeah. um, <laughs> you know that's not just breathing a little spout of fire that's gonna really uh cause some imp- like the impact on any sort of interactive scene that a pyroclastic flow breath is that's really cool <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I mean you know I I um I love I love drag I love all dragons you know love um, all dragons I love <laughs> I love all dragons toothless is great I love you know the cute dragons too despite you know child me did not think that cute dragons should be a thing <laughs> but yeah. um but adult me is is willing to allow for for yeah 
cute dragons but there's, there's room in the world for the cute dragons too but yeah but i i really wanted in this series i wanted the dragons to be forces of nature gone amok wow you know, i wanted them to be these these uncontrollable things that you just can't really easily deal with unless you're of a godlike power level um you know the things that you would send armies to deal with <laughs> Rather than just, you know, one guy with a, right. you know, magic sword. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Are they, are they smart? Well, they're, they like are. Wisdom, int, what, what, what are, what are their stats? There? They're cursed. Oh. So, so all of the dragons uh, in these books came about because of this ritual that goes wrong. And so there were, um, there were eight individuals involved in this ritual and they became the eight dragons and that's it that's that's all the dragons that are out there um okay. so they're not uh they're not born they don't there's not like they don't an have more of the dragon that's going to swoop over the battlefield that's right not a thing. right and they're all individually unique so you know the old man is is this sort of volcanic thing and then you have um you have uh morios who i was like i want a dragon made out of swords (laughs) okay along with the catchphrases your premises are absolutely impeccable top notch like i want a dragon that's swords yes yes because of course you want a dragon that's swords so you know in the second book basically a very large city gets taken out by this dragon that's made out of swords i mean not literally made out of swords but he's very he's very sharp and pokey is what i'm saying very 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 metal very very uh very cutty um (laughs) spiky all over especially because you started with kaiju i have this like pacific rim scale in my because I love yeah that movie. yeah I love that movie yeah um, no very much very and much that so but first because I think you started with volcano I was also reminded of the recent um of Moana the oh, nature yeah, yeah, yeah. aspect in it because I was really taken by how fierce they made her in the movie it was like you know rage and anger displayed I think that it's it's um it's a very cool aesthetic. Uh, oh my gosh, I had I had a question the whole time, and then I got distracted by thinking about how Moana Dragon. Um, oh, this might be a little bit of a tangent. We'll see where it goes. Did you play slash like Skyrim? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes and yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, for a long time, it, well, actually kind of still, because, you know, you get asked in video games, what's your favorite video game a mm-hmm. lot. Oh yeah. Um, and, and I would always just like, with no hesitation, come back with Morrowind. <laughs> just oblivion. We're, you know, we're the same person just in like one generation difference. See, I hated oblivion. <laughs> and I hated Skyrim. <laughs> I hated oblivion. I hated oblivion so much. I will tell you why. Yes. I will tell you why. Do. I have please. opinions on this one. Because okay, so so Morrowind. Morrowind pops you down on this this place and basically says, um eventually the game's been out decades at this point i feel like can spoiler things oh yeah yeah um <laughs> we can spoilers all the way through skyrim if you're gonna get mad about it come on it's been out a while <laughs> <laughs> you know it pops you down and says you're gonna spy for us so embed yourself in society yeah right find find a way to become important go and doesn't tell you what to do or how to do it oblivion says Go find the specific The world is about to end. You have to go fix it. Oh, and I I guess if you wanted to get distracted and you're a terrible person, you can go off and do all of these other things. But it it kind of implies that you're the worst. (laughs) I have played probably thousands of hours of Oblivion at this point. And the amount of time that was, I have beaten it once. I've beaten the final boss once. 
I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I just went, you know what? And <laughs> I'm not going like to pay my any attention to that. 35th <laughs> playthrough because I would go, I would beat every single Thieves Guild and Mages Guild and all of the other ones. Like the main yeah, plot yeah, of yeah. that story was not why. <laughs> Was yeah, when I say when I say I hate Oblivion, I don't actually hate Oblivion. Sure. It's not it's not the actual game itself that I had a problem with. It was that framing device. <laughs> it was I, I'm very the same specific way with Skyrim. The reason this whole thing came to mind was because when I played Skyrim, I was so disappointed in the dragons. Y- yeah, it yeah. felt like it was like number one. It felt like. I was supposed to be playing as a big muscular Viking man type thing just by the marketing. Like that obviously right. wasn't yeah, yeah, the yeah, game yeah. either, but the, the Oblivion was just marketed as like, look at these amazing landscapes and, you know, same with Morrowind to an extent. Um, but when I first fought a dragon in Skyrim, I was like, this is annoying. They're just, they're, they're, not super big they're really not smart they're not and it dragons. Was so disappointing sorry i'm that person they're not dragons they're not dragons <laughs> no that would help me to maybe not hate the game but not resent the game as much for because they're the dragons are just yeah yeah. It doesn't feel like that epic scale you were talking about with like being a force of nature yeah it's more like a mosquito <laughs> Uh, they they don't well I mean the problem is is that they don't co- they come off as being um, animals yes exactly and they're yeah. not supposed to be mm-hmm. but they, that's how they come off yeah. in behavior and in all the rest of it you just kind of like well they're 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 kind of like um, they're kind of like a more dangerous locust swarm I mean not you know, not yeah. locust particular but it's it's, it's about the quantity not the yeah individual dragons yeah. yeah dragons should have personality and it sounds like your dragons have major personality lots of personality yeah yeah um and and all they're, they're they're also um they're maybe not sane either so that's <laughs> that's an additional you know well, that's, i mean i don't know how if they're like ancient dragons or long-lived dragons but that's something with like D dragons it would not make sense for me to understand their psyche they would have to seem insane to humans because they live so much longer than us and have such different priorities well and they used to be humans yeah. <laughs> so they're not they're not happy i guess is uh the thing to, <laughs> they're not happy you they're know happy dragons this mm, is not too nope. yeah no. Very early on, somebody was like, so are, are these good dragons? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, they are not. There's there not no friendly, happy, go yeah. lucky. Yeah, no, they're they're very much not good dragons. They're not even like ambivalent dragons. They're actively malicial, malicious. And and that's how I like them. So yeah. um I you know, I mean I can't I can't promise I will never write something that has dragons that are not that way, but certainly the dragons on this world not not anybody's friend nobody's friend yeah i i very much like the concept of them being so individualized and like rare and you know i i think of in pacific rim the the two scientists the one that like knows all the different names of all the different kaijus and like you know that there are these scholars in your world that are like oh there's a footprint and like (laughs) I love to think about those people like this thing will absolutely murder you and they're like but look at its teeth (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah um and and some of those guys are characters so um (laughs) they're running around being very um but but it must be documented (laughs) (laughs) okay so question from chat since this book one had a dragon on it Book four has an octopus on it. No. Book Ooh. four has a kraken on it. I did call it a kraken the first time, <laughs> but chat called it an octopus. So it is sure, still sure. a kaiju monstrous creature. Well, there there is um there's actually a kraken that is in the first book. Okay. Um and, and ends up fighting uh one of the dragons. Uh, that does not work out well for the Kraken, by the way. <laughs> 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 uh, 
um, and uh, you know, so so basically, we decided that that each book was going to have uh, a monster that was featured in the book. You know, um, which is not to say they they can't be in others, but you know, one one monster per cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and book four, yeah, has has uh, the return of of. A different kraken. A different kraken. So, what are the, <laughs> so there's dragon, kraken. What are the other covers? Oh, oh, oh! Sorry. Uh, so there's there is a. Um, well, it's it's it looks like a nightmare. It's not a nightmare. It's um, there's a there's a uh, race called Firebloods, and so it's okay. a fireblood. Um, it's specifically there's there's one in that book uh, named uh, Ariscon and. It's that one. Um, and then book three uh, has um, book three is actually kind of a little bit of an outlier in that the other th- the other uh, the other three books had specific people and uh, monsters on the covers. And that one is more of a so the so book three has um, there are these uh, these elephants Ooh. That are the uh, the servants of the death goddess, um, and uh, again with just the very cool premises. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, in the afterlife, you can you can come across these hunts being staged by the the goddess of death when she has her servitors hunting demons, and they they ride these these white elephants that's so cool um i'm feeling that anybody in chat who has not read your books yet is just going to be like all right race into the local bookstore local (laughs) library gotta get i this sounds way too rad so so yeah we we decided that uh you know given that there's a lot of death in book three uh spoiler yeah Um, (laughs) good warning that um that we would put uh, one of one of the death goddesses uh, elephants on the cover. So, chat has a question, and this is actually something that I am also very interested in. Uh, looking at reviews, it seems like there's complex character timeline interactions going on throughout the series, which is wonderful. Uh, but this person and I am starting to listen to audiobooks. Is the series? better suit do you feel like the series is much better suited to physically like reading or does it translate okay is it okay to follow an audiobook form i um i think it it translates very well into audiobook um so so that there's there are a couple we're gonna be we're gonna be bluntly honest here um the the downside to the audiobook because there is one Mm -hmm. um the downside to the audiobook is um that you don't get the uh the supplementary material that you go back and look at so you you don't get the family tree in the backs in the back you don't get the timeline in the back you don't get the glossary in the back like there's this that stuff that's in the back of a big epic fantasy book and you Mm -hmm. you don't get that Mm -hmm. um on the other hand uh the the voice actors for this are amazing and they did such a great job of it and um theodore chin who um, does uh, did most of the well? There was there's another one too, but um, he did most of the uh, narration for the person who's doing a lot of the chronicling. Oh, okay. who's pulling it all together? So it's so all the footnotes. He does all the footnotes, and you um, you'd miss that. You know, you, yeah. you'd miss. He just does a wonderful, wonderful job of that, and it because of the way the audiobook is done, it's just folded in. Um, so you, you sort of get this sort of immediate, um, you know, footnote thing where in the, in the physical copy, it's great. Cause you know, it's right there. You can just pop to the bottom of the page, pop back up again, eBooks, eBooks, um, depending on how the problem is, is that there isn't a good standard for how yeah. eBooks treat mm-hmm. footnotes. Yeah. Um, and so depending on what an individual person's reader is set up as mm-hmm. and where they got the ebook from. And like, there's just a bunch of variables. Yeah. Um, depends on kind of how gracefully that ebook deals with the footnotes. 
I have I have encountered people who've said, oh, all the footnotes were pushed to the end of a chapter. I'm like, oh, that's not how I would yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, oh, that's weird. Because, you know, we I grew up without the internet for the first many, many years of my life. Books were meant to be books. There's a book. It's that's what it is. There's not you don't footnotes don't change and how they present themselves they're on the page yeah yeah it's it's really it's really strange and I I mean I like ebooks I like um I like the convenience of being able to just pull out my phone and go "Mm, I have time right now I'm waiting for the doctor or whatever I'm just gonna pull out and start reading um but yeah I I unintentionally I kind of made a book that really is best read in either consumed in either physical copy or in in audiobook yeah from what from from that summary what I got is that I will want to to consume it both ways that I want to hear that narration because that sounds amazing but I am such a sucker for like a glossary and the a family tree oh who doesn't love a family tree in a fantasy book come on there might be more than one (laughs) Yes, you you might need them. <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> I got so salty when people were like, "You got to read Game of Thrones. It's this amazing fantasy epic." And then I read two or three of the books, and I was like, "Number one, this is political intrigue, not fantasy. Number two, <laughs> if they are going to make a world this complicated, give me give me some trees. I need some gra- I need some charts. I need an extensive glossary, a map." I can't just do a little paperback for that. I need the whole thing. <laughs> yep, yep. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, and and fortunately, my editor agreed, and and she was like, "So we're we're getting we're getting a family tree for this, right?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we are. Don't worry, yeah. I, I got this. <laughs> um, you know, because uh, the the world um, the world is uh, I, I divided in two. Okay. so to speak um you know there's the living world and then there's the afterlife and they're they're both locations they're both places that you can Physical. go to mm-hmm. um and so reincarnation is a thing you you okay. can you can be reincarnated um and when you're dealing with some of these people are immortal um there's there's some very long lifespans in, in play basically you get some very strange reincarnation family relationships <laughs> that can happen so oh <laughs> oh. oh okay <laughs> so, so yeah um and, and from chat it says and you draw them yeah um you know so i i i well i mean i guess i i still am i used to work as an illustrator i still am an artist um so i i did all of the interior artwork um myself just because it was easy that way it's your world well that actually I don't know um how your Instagram alerts are set up but you might have noticed me favoring very old Instagram posts of yours because it's like scrolling through I felt so at home uh because it's it's you know the books but then it's also some incredible painted boots and bullet journal layouts <laughs> with illustrations. And it was just like, just this vibrant burst of arts. What is I, your, how do you, this is, how do you branch out or how do you encourage people to branch out and just do any sort of medium but express creativity? Um, if you, it, unless it's just an inherent thing that you feel like you do. <laughs> I kind of have never not done it. So it, it is difficult for me to just give any meaningful advice other than do stuff, Um, do do, do stuff. Uh, You know, um, I think actually the, the very first year that um, Bruin of Kings came out, Mm -hmm. I, um, I was asked if I had anything for world builders, right. For, for one of the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I was like, sure. And I, I threw together this, um, you know, uh, pyrography, this piece of pyrography with the, the cover art on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, people were like, well, how did you, how did you get into pyrography? And I'm like, well, it just seemed 
fun. So I, you know, cool. you get to draw with fire. Who doesn't? <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to be? We have very similar ways of thinking about <laughs> crafts and crafting. It's like, ooh, you use a butane torch with that? Let's try right. that craft. <laughs> right. That's that sounds fun and dangerous. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I the um, the the bullet journaling thing um, mm-hmm. happened just because I'm I'm very disorganized. Um, I'm extremely disorganized. This is this is uh, my bullet journal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and I, it's it's really funny. This is this is part of why I ended up as a video game producer right is because like you compensate the other way (laughs) so um people were always like i i I wouldn't i would have thought you were actually very organized like "Uh -uh, uh-uh no (laughs) um but but i know i'm not organized and so i you know trip check and triple check and Mm -hmm. you know make systems make right right and and pretty soon you've you've faked it successfully and (laughs) <laughs> and and then you can be you know following other people around and being like you know so <laughs> did you did you do the thing because <laughs> okay, my, so my notes say here say you have to do the thing <laughs> okay, I, know, I dream of a world where a personal a digital personal assistant is not something controlled by a corporation but is something that is genuinely like a little navi that you we were like hey remind me to do these things because technology is just on the cusp of working perfectly for my brain but it's not quite there not quite there yet it takes too much setup it takes too much you know but definitely relate to that so we are almost out of time I do want to ask one last question we will probably have you back for another chat sometime so we'll do the we'll do the lightning round today too we'll do both first question Oh man, this might lead us down a rabbit hole. Do you have a favorite D and D class or trope? Oh gosh, yeah. um, <laughs> just wait, wait until the last minute to ask the big, big questions. Yeah, the the big questions. Um, I used to. There was a time I would have, without hesitation, answered rogue. You know that that would have been That's the instant exactly. answer, mm-hmm. but. I have to say, um, fifth edition is is definitely broadening things out for me. Um, okay, you know, so so that that would be that would be a harder question for me <laughs> these days because I think they've done a very good job of making most of the classes. Looking at you, Ranger. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and even they're they're fixing Rangers. So I you know I'll, I'll stop picking on it quite so much, but um. You know, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I, I would, I wouldn't be able to sp- pick a specific pick one. A favorite, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been in a long running fifth edition campaign where I've been playing uh, a cleric of um, a cleric of life. Okay. And mm-hmm. um, and he's <laughs> he's just, uh, yeah, he's he's so much fun. Um, <laughs> we should have a segment on World Builders Weekly where it's. Tell us about your D&D character because yeah, I want to know yeah. like <laughs> I'm about we're about to start playing in person again I think this week after like a year of occasional digital playing but usually just not really getting to play very much at all so I made t-shirts for everybody in our campaign a couple of years back and mine at the time was like uh uh you know cleric I can heal and I have a 19 AC come at me. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And, and, and that was then, and now it's like a 23 AC. <laughs> so. I love the idea that you would like put a patch over the, the number, like as it goes up, there's just one of those little number. Patches. I really should. I really should. I should just like, yeah, I should absolutely just take a fabric pad and just scribble it out and put a new thing up there. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. We still have a couple minutes. We'll do the lightning round really quick. Okay. Uh, this is also probably a fairly deep question for you. What's your beverage of choice? It can be alcoholic, non-alcoholic, or you could choose one of both. Um, so, uh, 
there's the there's the beverage that I need, which is coffee, and there's the beverage I would choose, which is tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, both very important. Both very important, but those those two on that side of things. Um, and then on the on the alcohol side of things, um, I would some sort of cocktail. I tend to vary. Um, in my yeah, I saw somebody made one for the book release. Yes. How yes. flattering to have somebody create a cocktail in honor of your book. That's and so he, cool. And he did such a great I mean, I, I had it last night. It was it was really good. Um, <laughs> on, if you go to Jen's Twitter, if she's retweeted the I, I think I, I I think I did on Instagram too. Oh um, probably yeah, yeah. Yeah. So but yeah, no, uh it's uh it he the uh fellow named elias made it and uh, came up with it and it's uh it's called chain the lash which is very appropriate for book four you'll have to you'll have to i can't spoiler that yeah. um it's and, a good hook. <laughs> and um uh and and yeah it's it's this uh it's this fabulous tiki drink and it's um it's kind of like a, a mai tai ish Ooh. uh and it he, he it is exactly the co- color of the cover it's amazing <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, that was what struck me first was like, that is a vibrant drink. That is, yes, he nailed it. It is very teal. Second lightning round, meal of choice. If you could order takeout or go to any place, get any meal you want. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> my husband just shouted out moon of tunis um, <laughs> there's there's a restaurant in la that we we really 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 loved Your favorite place um on the other hand speaking of restaurants in la then there there if it was anything i could want i'd like to go back in time and have the full spread um at uh typhoon in um santa monica it's closed can't do that anymore but um time traveling is completely valid in these questions yep um it was it was this uh it was this uh pan pacific restaurant uh at santa monica airport oh okay and uh they they just the the filipino barbecue pork there was um yeah (laughs) it was just the most amazing thing that i have ever ever eaten Um, some of those meals just stick with you forever and it's like oh if only i could go back yep uh if you had if somebody said hey well we know that a great read to pick up right now (laughs) would be your book that was just released on the 11th but if you were to recommend a weekend read to somebody or just a recent good pick what would you recommend um i think um well, something they can pick up now, I would recommend uh, Marina Lostetter's The Helm of Midnight. Okay. Um, that came out a couple weeks ago. That is um, a fabulous fantasy story. Uh, definitely, I think, of something you could, you could tackle in a weekend. Uh, and it is very sort of um, fan- epic fantasy meets kind of Hannibal Lecter. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah. You know, so you have this... Uh, this she's a cop called something else, but she's a cop who is uh, tasked with recovering this, uh, this magic mask that is possessed by a serial killer. Okay. And it is great. That sounds spooky fantasy. Very cool. Fantastic world building. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff. All right. And we'll just, we're going to skip to the last one. If you could sit down again, time traveling is acceptable. Uh, if you could sit down and have a conversation with anyone, real or imagined, alive or dead, who would it be? Um, well, there is a lot of answers to that question, but since I have her on my mind right now, I'm going to go with Ursula K. Le Guin. That is a very popular one, and yeah. I think would just be a really great conversation. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's possible to just answer that question definitively. There's it depends on your mood and the weather because there's a lot of great ideas out there. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely like a ton of people that I would love to be able to sit down and have chats with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us this week, Jen. It was really great chatting. Had an absolute blast. Yeah, it was great. Thank you for having me over. I very much appreciate it. And um, I mean, you know, digitally having me over. And uh, yeah, I would love to do it again. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Everybody, make sure you check out uh, the links that were in chat. I don't know about you guys, but I am going to go figure out how to get my hands on both the audio and the physical book at the same time and just binge the series up to this point uh, because it just sounds amazing. So thank you so much for sharing your dragons with us. This is how you get dragons. (laughs) (laughs) And let's see, I guess that would be a great sign off word for today. Today's sign off word is Viva Dragons. Viva Dragons! Viva Dragons! Hooray!